Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you a very interesting case that has been radiographically documented over the last two years. So this is a very very good case for all of us to learn from. We are seeing currently three periapical radiographs. The first two on the left are taken back in January of 2017. The one on the right was taken March of 2019 so just this month so between these two or between the radiographs there has been two years of time period look over here and we're seeing periapical radiograph of the maxillary central incisors you can see the intermaxillary suture. You can also see the outline of the nose. And additionally, there is a partly well defined radiolucency that's superimposed over the apical third of the root. Now, we're looking at the same area just from a different angle looks like a lateral PA projection so this is tooth number 8 and 9 and again we can see that radiolucency and along its border it appears to be corticated at least along its distal border and if you look carefully this corticated border instead of going this way perhaps it does but it also appears to be continuous with another border that extends superiorly and then the left side of the border is not well visualized this border or perceived border is actually a lateral excuse me lamina dura of number eight so this was two years ago now fast forward two years and you can once again visualize that radiolucency has it changed much not very much but did it grow a little bit look carefully between the two yes it did right it did ever so slightly so that it's definitely grown has grown so that tells us this whatever this is it has changed very little over the last two years of period it has a border that's well defined distally but medially it's difficult to discern on periapical radiograph the patient is middle-aged, um, Hispanic male, where this was incidentally discovered two years ago, and the doctor suggested uh, radiographic follow-up. Patient is asymptomatic, uh, the tooth number 8, 9, as well as 7, tests normal to percussion and vitality testing. Um, so what do you guys think this is? So at this point, given that the patient is asymptomatic, some of you have, may suggest lateral periodontal cyst, uh, which is, a, I think, a good, uh, acceptable um, differential diagnosis. And what else would you think of? Would you consider nasopalatine canal cyst? Well, typically, nasopalatine canal cyst occurs within the nasopalatine canal, therefore they tend to be more centrally located uh, between the two central incisors, so more toward the midline of the maxilla, but in this case this is um, localized in the area of number 8. So just based on 2D images, would you consider nasopalatine canal cysts or not? So these images were submitted from outside doctor to our pathologist who then saw this case and felt the need for CBCT scan and that's how this case came to me so now let's take a look at Combeam CT scan of this area starting with the axial view let's go up to the top and scroll down inferiorly so we can see anterior nasal spine and here we see nasopalatine canal. A 
Let's look again. Pay close attention to the size and shape of the nasal palatine canal. Now let's look at it from the coronal view, from the anterior, moving posteriorly. So that's the view, similar view that we see, saw on periapical radiograph, didn't we? A well corticated border that extended superiorly, whereas the medial border was not as clear on PA. And you can see that this lucency is continuous with the rest of the nasopalatine canal. Let's look again. Now, the sagittal view. Running from one side to the other side of the skin. Right there. Incidental finding of an apical radiolucency. There's a disruption of the lamina dura. So the radiographic features are pretty di uh, definitive in this case. Um, despite the fact that it's asymmetric, what we have is asymmetric enlargement of the nasal palatine canal where all of its borders are continuous with the nasal palatine canal. Uh, it has yet to cause any significant root resorption, luckily. And so, based on the radiographic feature, you should say, you should be able to determine that this most likely represents a nasal palatine canal cyst. So nasal palatine canal cyst is a non-odontogenic lesion, as you know, and it occurs within the nasal palatine canal. And this example uh, goes out to show you that it doesn't always have to occur in the mid-sagittal suture or intermaxillary suture. You can have, a have an asymmetric enlargement of the nasal palatine canal. So this is a uh, really good case and uh, given the fact that there has been very little change over the last two years, you learn that this lesion grows very very slowly. Okay, um, so yes, so here's a 3D rendering of that lesion with widened and perforation of the adjacent um, palatal cortical plate or widening of that foramen. Okay, well that's it for me. I just find this case to be very very interesting. We don't always have periapical radiograph dating back two years ago. So uh, this I believe is a very very um, unique case for all of us to learn from. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.